and after a few minutes or a, an hour maybe, they see suddenly new things and everybody's really like just has a nice time. Like they have maybe done it in school once, but it's a different setting, of course. That video does in a like nice place and like in, in a more like creative way, not in school. looked at a few things and somehow people ask yeah, how big is it and you know it's it's something you have to have a, some experience and you just have to know a bit about microscopy I think that's fun so microscopy I think it's about 350 years old so like people have done it for a long time and there was this guy Anthony Leuvenhoek like at 1680 I don't know, maybe there was people doing optics and microscopy in China as well, I don't know about it. So this guy, what they have been doing, you see here like some notes of like 17th century like scientific journal. So this is all, all the equations and all the optics they figured out. And in the beginning, if you look at this or at, at like this, they always just made spheres, spherical lenses. So they, they make like a round thing, but very small. So they make like a three millimeter piece of like they use sand or something, polish it by hand. And then this little thing, the lens comes in this hole. And then they put the sample on this little thing. And you see this, this is only this big, so this whole device. You see it's got like tiny little screws. So like these clockmakers from the time were making these little screws. So you can, exactly like we have, you have to really position the sample very precisely. So you need some mechanical precision tools to do microscopy and even at that time like they, they could do that. So this guy Anthony Leuvenhoek, it's like one story which I think is interesting is all the, these I told them they're polished by hand. So what Anthony Leuvenhoek from Holland he was, was doing, he was a businessman and at the age of 60 he was rich, he kind of as a hobby became like a microscopist and scientist. So he figured out that he takes a piece of glass and puts it in a, fla in a flame, pulls it until it breaks, and so the little pieces that break off melt in the fire, and because they're molten, they form a perfect sphere, fall down and cool down. So he made a different method to, to produce these little lenses. But he never told anybody. <laughs> so it was not not about open source. So in all his papers he has been written, he describes that he has ground a new, like, very perfect lens, but he was lying. Only like 30 years later people found out that he has this other method. So he had a big advantage over all other microscopists. So he was the first one who detected many things like cellular structures and bacteria. That he called them animalcules. So he was the first person who detected there's all these huge uh, variety of life forms at another length scale. Um, so there's different ways to do microscopy. I already told you a little bit, there's bright field, that's kind of this image. So we shine light through the sample to our eye or to our tip in our case that gives images like this and we have a lot of light and so we kind of create a shadow of, of, the, of what we want to look at. Then there's also dark field which is we shine light from the side and the image like some of the light gets reflected from our subject down to the chip. So we get much less light because we only get the reflected light, but it gets a nice contrast because the background is perfectly black in theory, and everything that's kind of scattering and reflecting light is shown on the, on the image. A third th um, thing that's very, very important in science nowadays is fluorescence. So. So fluorescence, I think I brought some. So you see, um, so this solution, I have UV light here, you see. So it's ultraviolet light, but this gets really like bright green now. So I have a low wavelength like light source, and there's a molecule in there, and on molecular level, some process happens, and light is emitted again in another wavelength, in this case green. And so this is a very popular tool now. I showed you the GFP bunny. So there they also put this like molecule inside the DNA. And this is just like a chemical molecule. It's nothing biological. But it's a very useful tool for, for um, nowadays biology because you can specifically stain 
or like color, like dyeing your hair, you can dye a cell, specific parts of a cell. In this case, you see in blue, you see the cell nucleus. In green, you see like certain fibers that make the mechanical structure of the cell. And maybe in red, in this case, is some protein that's in the membrane of a cell. So this is like the most important tool in biology, is fluorescence. I've been working on it, so I want to check to what extent I can also see fluorescence, detect fluorescence with, with this microscope, with the webcam. But of course, here intensity is even lower. We don't shine directly through. We have a molecular like photon that's emitted. So it's like we need to have really like a dark room. And so it's, but it's kind of fun. So you can also, if you put it in the sunlight, there's a lot of UVs, like very bright green. And you can get it in a drugstore. It's not called fluorescein, and it's very cheap. You can dye like whole rivers. People do it sometimes. And then everything is like shining bright. And this image down here is not normal microscopy. This was done by a laser scanning microscope. So that's another optical microscope. So we have a, a laser also using fluorescence. And we then scan here. We detect like the fluorescence. Then we go next point. We detect next point, next point. So it's a scanning method. We scan like our laser through our sample. And because we can focus it, we can measure in 3D space. So the image yesterday I showed you with the cell, like in 3D, there was some with focal laser microscopy. This is high end. We cannot do it. I think these three, we might be able to get some stuff within, using a webcam. And if we can see fluorescence, we can go much more into biological details. Now we just see you know, how it's diffracting the light. We don't see like biological processes. I already told you a bit about optics, and maybe you have a feeling now. So the real image. That's where our chip is, or our eye on this side. Then there is the lens, and somewhere there's the object. And so there's like some simple formulas. So if we move the lens away, let's say outside, what happens is we get the, uh, it's like, okay, here's the chip, the lens is here, and our focus is here. So this is where we are in focus. If we move this out, we get a higher magnification, but the the focus plane gets closer to the lens. So I think that's kind of the feeling I got just by playing around with it. Now, if I have a focus like normal webcam on my face, everything is in focus. My nose and my, my ear, they're both in focus. So the higher the magnification is, the smaller gets this like layer that is in focus. It is called focal death. Like, yeah, focal death. If you watch an American Hollywood movie, they have a very small focal depth. They want it. It's like the aesthetics of cinema is that your eye is a bit is not in focus, but your face is. This is like how like movie makers want to have. So they use lenses that have a very small focal depth. In microscopy, we want the other thing. We want to have a large focal depth. So we see everything, and it's, everything is in focus. So we need different kind of lenses. Of course, our webcam hasn't got a perfect lens. This is like a real microscopy setup. So it's got many lenses to really improve the like corrections of lenses and also because the different wavelengths, like blue and red, they have a different behavior through the glass. So this is all corrected in a proper microscope. But we don't need that. Other ways to generate microscopic images is um, electron microscopy. Maybe you've seen they're usually black and white pictures, so there's no color. And they're much higher magnification. And in this case, we have a very, very long focal depth. This is so specific about this electron microscopy image. So everything is in focus, because we shoot electrons at our specimen and then see how they're reflected back. It doesn't really, it's not optics anymore. It's also kind of a ray of electron. It's like it's an electron beam that goes through mag magnetic fields, kind of lenses, but it's like a magnet. And scanning is also, so we scan with the electron beam point by point and look how it's reflected and then we can generate these images like, like this one. This is a tardigrade again. So this is the little animal we, are, we also can look at and you see the little claws. So this is by far higher magnified that's ever going to be possible with light. 